And maybe we can never eliminate violence from our nature because in nature in and of itself is violent, but we can grow past, we can evolve the way that we allow violence to occur in our society. There's so much more that can be done. This is a really hard truth to swallow. It's, it's even hard for me to say it and admit to it myself. But I believe that every single human on this planet is the product of extreme violence. Now, hold on a second, just bear with me. What do I mean when I say that we are the products of extreme violence? When I say violence, I mean that there are thousands of years of human history in which humans have been battling with each other for survival battling for resources. Not always, there's certainly been times of peace, but there's well-documented wars and battles and violence everywhere in the world with every historical legacy of peoples. Whether we're talking about the older ancient African tribes or we're talking about the Japanese era of samurai or all of the violent history in Europe and the Americas, there's violence everywhere we go. Every single human is the result of ancestors who did something to succeed long enough to rep reproduce, to procreate, to pass on our genetic material. So if you're alive in this moment and you're listening to this message, I can almost guarantee that you are here because of some violent things that some of your ancestors did in your past. Again, not all of them, but with everything that we know, with what we can gather from historical evidence and story, we know that human existence, at least part of it, has been shaped by tremendous amounts of violence. Now let that land for a second. This one hit me like a dagger to the heart. Part of my ancestry comes from Japan. My, my father's whole side of the family is from Japan, and Japan is a very homogenous country. There's long stretches of time, centuries, where the island of Japan was completely insulated from the outside world. During that time, during the age of samurai, there were violent battles and petitions and uh, bargaining for territory that happened over the course of hundreds of years. And entire clans of people were wiped out in efforts to unite all of the country under one singular rule. So just thinking about my personal ancestral history during that time, I can guarantee that some of my ancestors who survived and made it were partaking in violence that led them to where they were to survive. <laughs> if you think about it this way, one, one my ancestors versus someone else's ancestors coming into conflict, who do you think won that resulted in me being here? <laughs> if my ancestral line was wiped out, I wouldn't be here sharing this with you, telling you this message. And recently I was researching more about the samurai history because it's something that really fascinates me. And when I recognized that the entire country of Japan was swarmed in battle and violence for centuries at, at a time, it helped me realize that I must be the product of that. And then fast forward to modern times, looking around me where there's still violence present everywhere we go. We're all in part responsible. We're all in part the products of violence in our culture. Now, I think that nature inherently is violent. If you, if you follow any of these social media channels or YouTube channels that show just how violent nature can be, you see a lion tearing apart a baby antelope, <laughs> or you see a predator tearing apart a, a piece of prey so that they can eat and so they can survive. But there's something that strikes a chord in most of us as humans that, ah, oh, we feel, we empathize for that animal who's losing its life, for that mother who just lost its, its baby to a predator. But that is so inherent in the natural world and over time we've got more and more distant from that. Most of us are privileged enough not to deal with or encounter violence in our day-to-day -day lives. And I think that that's distanced us from that part of our reality, the reality that violence is a part of existence on this planet. Now, I also believe that there are certain layers of violence that have no part in our society. There's no reason for us to be committing many of these acts of violence that we see against each other based on the way that we can survive. There's more than enough resources. There's more than enough food. There's plenty of places to shelter and house people. But, and this is a much longer conversation, but the marginalization of people, the disenfranchisement of peoples has created conflict and discord and, the, and racism and social inequality and gender inequality. So many layers in our society have continued to allow for violence to exist. So I don't know what the solution is to this conversation. 
And here we are, just about a year outside of the anniversary of George Floyd and, and the trials that are now starting to come to a close around that instance in our, in our culture a year ago. And we're having this conversation about violence as mass shootings and murders and sexual abuse, rape, assault, they're, they're continuing to happen in our society. I think it's important to acknowledge that violence is something that has always been present. And it's in part responsible for why most of us are able to be here today, but that that doesn't excuse or allow for violence to continue to perpetuate because we can do better. We know we can. We wa that's why we watch the news and we see somebody who goes into a grocery store and kills 10 people. We, we, there's some part inherently in us that knows that didn't have to happen. We can do better. And maybe we can never eliminate violence from our nature because in nature in and of itself is violent, but we can grow past, we can evolve the way that we allow violence to occur in our society. And there's so much more that can be done. There's so many more resources we can provide for our young people. There's so much more resources we can give to other people to help reduce their overall level of stress that's connected to, I need to survive. So the people don't have to fight for survival anymore. So I hope this message lands in your heart similarly in the way it landed in mine. I hope that it shakes you. I hope that it rattles you. I hope that it makes you uncomfortable to imagine the fact that you are the product of a violent history, but that it also empowers you, empowers me, empowers us to have a different dialogue around what violence in our society looks like. Where does violence have its place and how can we do better moving forward for the future generations so that by the time that we're all old and stumbling over ourselves, we don't have to read headlines about mass shootings. We don't have to listen to recordings of parents losing their children to unnecessary violence. So with a lot of love and very much respect, I send this message to you. Please share it up and spread it so that we can expand this dialogue around violence in our society and our culture so that we can all do better and be a part in the solution, united as one. Please subscribe to this YouTube channel while you're at it so that you can keep getting these messages each and every time we drop them. And I'll catch y'all guys on the next one. Peace.